Hello, and welcome to this presentation that I'm calling What Triggers and Fuels Thunderstorms. So first, what are the ingredients to a thunderstorm? The dew point must be at least 55 in order to have the humidity necessary for the next step. Instability essentially is a warm, moist air pocket rising to meet higher, drier, and colder air due to warmer air being more buoyant. And finally, wind shears involved, or the speed and direction of the wind potentially leading to rotation. So first let's start talking about CAPE. Heat, while certainly a factor, isn't enough of an indication of fuel for a storm. CAPE, or Convective Available Potential Energy, is a good way to determine if conditions are favorable for storms. CAPE essentially is the instability in the atmosphere and the updraft, or the warmer, moist, lower air due to its buoyancy, being elevated to the storm itself, fueling said storm. The more CAPE mixed with heat is available, the more fuel the storm has to strengthen. Eventually, the colder air above cools the warmer air below enough to stop its elevation. That is how a storm's height is determined. Said air then spreads out laterally. So CAPE is a potential for a storm to develop, but next we'll discuss what makes a storm longer lasting and potentially more severe. And that is shear. Shear is the wind gaining strength and or changing directions as you go higher up in the atmosphere. Contrary to what I thought growing up, rotation isn't enough for a tornado as all supercell storms have rotation in some form. As a storm has warm, moist air moving upward towards it, higher elevations of the storm have cooler, drier air moving downwards against it. That causes the already rotating air of a supercell to strengthen as the vacuum of warm air meets it. Generally, the higher the warm, moist air elevates before stopping due to the drop of temperature of that particular packet of air, the greater the risk of hail and stronger winds. That's because the moist air gets cold enough to begin freezing, and the longer it stays at the freezing level, the greater the potential of hail and larger hail sizes. Also, as the stronger winds are pulled downward, that can cause strong straight line winds as well. That is what's known as a downburst. Keep in mind that none of this necessarily means that a tornado is being formed at the moment. But, if the shear is higher than 35 knots, with a high cape and it's quite warm or even hotter, you've got all the tools needed for a storm to become severe, or worse, tornadic. However, there is one more piece to the puzzle to consider in regards to tornadoes. And that is helicity. Helicity or storm relative helicity, is essentially the amount of rotation in updrafting air. The higher the helicity, the greater the chance of a mesocyclone, and the greater the chance of a tornado warning. Granted, however, without all the other ingredients, all this is, is spinning air. CAPE is commonly used with helicity, because CAPE determines instability while helicity is used to determine rising and rotating wind energy. We mentioned earlier about shear as well, and that is a factor too, because helicity is basically spinning shear in the low or surface elevation. Here's an example. Even though the helicity is at 482, nothing is going to come of this because there's no cape to speak of, and the dew point is in the 20s, well below where it needs to be to even consider the humidity necessary. So to consider storms in a nutshell, the best way that I can describe storms is kind of like baking. If the ingredients are separate, you don't have much. 
But when they start to come together, and the longer they are together, the more what you're baking takes shape. So here are some rough guidelines taken from weather.gov in regards to both cape and helicity. According to the example provided before, if the flour and eggs were added to the mix that was already there, it almost certainly be a severe thunderstorm with tornadoes possible. However, with a lack of humidity and very cold temperatures, there's no cape and no storm. So, as we're getting near to spring, let's go over one more time general thunderstorm safety tips. First though, what makes the storm severe? A severe storm must be capable of producing hail one inch or larger with wind gusts greater than 58 miles per hour or if neither of those are the case if the storm produces a tornado that automatically makes it severe. Severe thunderstorm watches are widespread. They could be over multiple counties or even states. Severe thunderstorm warnings indicate that a storm has been spotted by law enforcement, radar, or a storm spotter themselves. Severe thunderstorm warnings are typically the size of a city or of a smaller county. If you hear large hail or damaging winds are coming, go to an interior room. Stay away from windows if at all possible. If you have time and they behave, keep your pets with you. If outdoors, go in the nearest stable building you can. Sheds and storage buildings may not be stable enough. If you're outdoors and unable to enter a secure building, staying in your car may provide you a little protection, but if glass breaks, there's very little there to block the shards from hurting you. Definitely do not drive in strong winds if you can at all avoid it. So let's start talking about lightning safety next. If you're outdoors, avoid open fields, top of hills, and ridgetops. Stay away from tall objects even if they are isolated. If in a group, spread out so the current won't travel between people. And stay away from water, anything wet, or metal such as fences or poles. While they do not attract lightning, they do conduct electricity. If you're indoors, lightning can travel through electrical, phone, plumbing, or radio or TV boxes, so touching wired electronics can be dangerous. Manipulating them remotely, however, should be fine. Running water also could conduct electricity. Metal doorknobs or window frames also can carry electricity. And if possible, stay off balconies, porches, or open carports. Dog houses will not protect your dog, and having them changed to a fence leaves them extra vulnerable. Hail safety. First, let's consider hail sizes. So non-severe hail, is BB size, which is about an eighth of an inch, P size, which is a quarter of an inch, or marble size, which is half an inch. Severe hail is dime, nickel, or penny size, which is about three quarters of an inch, quarter size, which is an inch, half dollar, it's about one and a quarter inches, walnut, one and a half inches, or golf ball, one and three quarters inches. Significant severe hail is hen egg, which is about two inches, Tennis ball size, two and a half inches. Baseball, two and three quarter inches. Grapefruit, four inches. Or softball, four and a half inches of hail size. If you're outdoors, seek shelter as soon as possible. Typical outdoor cover won't work due to typical accompanying lightning. If indoors, stay away from windows. If hail is severe enough, stay on the first floor in case of broken windows or roof damage. If possible, and, and long time outages are a concern, turn electronics off that may cause storm surges when power comes back on abruptly. 
tornado safety. As with severe thunderstorms, tornado watches also can be widespread. This could be over multiple counties or even multiple states. Watches suggest that conditions are favorable for a storm that can spawn a tornado. A tornado warning implies a tornado has been spotted or indicated by a radar. Watch the radar or weather closely, and if a tornado nears, take shelter immediately. If you lose TV reception, having a way to watch or listen to a stream online or a radar that you can follow goes a long way in staying safe. If indoors, stay in an interior room away from windows. If you can, keep your pets with you to protect them too. The sirens may excite them or make them anxious, so they may go near windows to see what's going on. If at work or school, follow the same general guidelines, but if possible, avoid large open rooms. If outdoors, seek shelter immediately. Sheds, storage buildings, barns, mobile homes, and tents are not safe. If you can safely reach a tornado shelter before the danger nears, that should be sufficient, but of course be careful. Being in a car is not safe. If you can safely reach a shelter, good. But if you're absolutely stuck in your vehicle, get as low as you can and cover yourself as best you can. After the tornado, continue to monitor the weather and or radio, TV, or internet to make sure the severe storm has fully left the area. When safe, contact your friends and or loved ones to make sure they are safe as well. Once you know it's safe, assess for damage. Is there hail, lightning, or wind damage? If you have a yard, is the yard safe? Is there fence damage? If you live near the elderly or those handicapped, it also would be nice to check to see if they are okay and safe as well. Do not attempt first aid unless you are qualified to do so. Finally, let's consider flash flood safety. Flash floods can occur during severe storms. Especially in lower lying areas, a flood can sweep you off your feet or cause loss of control in your vehicle. Use caution, especially if driving at night. Areas near creeks or rivers are much more prone to flooding, but it can potentially happen anywhere. If it is possible, and flooding is prone in your area, seek higher elevations. Even if you don't know the depth of the water, never assume that you can ford it. If you notice your car stalling, abandon it if it's safe to do so, and seek higher ground. Water can hide dangerous debris like rocks, trash, or other potential hazards. So especially in regards to flooding, water should never be underestimated. Thank you very much for watching, and during this spring season, please be aware and stay safe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.